what we're going to do today and tomorrow, or tomorrow and the next day, is we are going to work some word problems and we're going to use what we know and you should remember that if we are dealing with a side 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 or a side angle side triangle once you set the picture up you'll want to use the law of cosines and if you are dealing with an angle side angle or an angle angle side you're going to use the law of sides and then if you're dealing with an angle side side then you are going to also use the law of sines, but this is the ambiguous case that you have to be careful for. And this is what some of you really don't understand what's going on. So hopefully by the time we review, you understand the ambiguous case or we'll go watch the video or something. But anyway, we're going to work some word problems. And then what I'm, I'm, I'm going to do is you have six problems that you're going to do tomorrow in class, and I'm going to work two of them for you today. So that's 33% of your homework. I'm such a nice guy. All right, so got a diagonals of a parallelogram are 88 and 66 in this little picture here. It says the shorter side is 20. And I have to find the acute angle formed by these diagonals. Now, if you didn't know, in a parallelogram, the diagonals will bisect each other. So I'm, I'm going to blow this picture up here and make it a little bit larger. So let's take a look at that left-hand side, just that triangle on the left-hand side. The shorter side is 20. Now this shorter diagonal that's going from top left to bottom right is, is 66 in length. Um, and half of that is going to be 33. So this is 33. The longer diagonal that's going from bottom left to the top right is 88 centimeters and half of that is 44. So this is a blown up picture of what's inside right here. And we are supposed to find this acute angle. So let's take a look at what we have. Our givens are all three sides, so this is clearly a side-side-side triangle. So we are going to use the law of cosines to find this missing angle. So I will set up my law of cosines equation, which is c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of angle c. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to call this angle C, and I'll call this angle A, and I'll call this angle B. So 20 will be side length C, and 33 will be side length A, and 44 will be side length B. So let's put this into our formula. 20 squared equals 33 squared plus 44 squared minus 2 times 33 times 44 times the cosine of that angle C. I'm going to go ahead and solve this for the cosine of angle C. So I'll get 20 squared minus 33 squared minus 44 squared. That's all divided by negative 2 times 33 times 44. And I'm going to take the arc cosine of this, and that will give me angle C. So if you put this in on your calculator, you do the arc cosine of all of this stuff. Let me see if I can do that real quick. I think I did that earlier. And I got 25.3 degrees. So you might check that, but I'm pretty sure. So the measure of angle C is 25.3 degrees, and I've rounded it to the nearest tenth. So nothing really new there. I just had to set up what was given to me and take a look at what kind of triangle I had. All right, so let's go do this last question, question six. And I've got this vertical tower, which means it makes a 90 degree angle with the horizontal from that point. So I'm going to extend this triangle here. So the 90 degree angle is right here. It stands on a hill, and the hill is inclined 16 degrees to the horizontal. So that means that this is 16 degrees here, which also means that this little angle with the hill and the horizontal is 16. It says at a point 95 feet down the hill, so at, to this point right here, this is 95, that an observer finds the angle of elevation to the top of the tower to be 54. So that means that this angle is 54 degrees. And we're supposed to find out how tall the tower is, so I'm going to take this picture in here and make it a little bit larger. So let's zoom, or not zoom, but let's scoot that just a little bit. I'm curious how that person found that to be 54 degrees. Like, hey, I'm just observing here, but that looks like it's 54 degrees. That's interesting. All right. Well, I wish I could have drawn that a better line. Anyway, so here is 
a worse picture, but at least it's bigger. This angle is 16, this angle is 54, this side length is 95, and I'm looking for this height right here. So let's go through some what we know. If this angle is 54 plus 16, that angle is a total of 70 degrees. So I'm looking at the big triangle here. If this total is 70 and this is 90, but 90 plus 70 is 160, that means that this top acute angle is 20 degrees. So I am now going to focus in on this oblique triangle that has a 95 side length, the 54 angle, and the 20 there. I'm, gonna, I'm even going to redraw that. Oh, look at that. We're going to the eraser for that. That's horrible. La, yeah, that's, that was bad. Okay. Get a little sheet of paper here to make this straighter. A little bit better. Okay, extend this down just a little bit further. Go up like that. All right. Wow. Uh, you're just going to have to forgive me. I'll get my eraser out here a little bit, but that's a little bit of erasing. Uh, okay, and I'll erase a little bit over here. Okay, so that was a complete failure drawing that triangle. But anyway. All right, so here's 95, and this angle is 54 degrees, and this angle up here is 20, and I want to find this missing side length Y. So if I want to do this, I'm going to go ahead and find this missing angle. If you have two angles in the triangle, some of you might be shocked to know that you can find the third angle by subtracting them from 180. And so that works out to be 74. That's 106. All right, with all that math, let's take a look at this triangle. This is, any way you look at it, this is an angle-side-angle triangle. I know two angles and a side included. So this is a law of sines triangle. All right, so let's set this up. I'll do y over the sine of 54 degrees equals 95 over the sine of 20. And if you just do this in your calculator, I'm going to get that y equals 95 times the sine of 54. 54. Here I go with my eraser again getting in a hurry. Okay, sine of 54 degrees, and that's all divided by the sine of 20. So let me type that into my calculator. And I'm getting 224.7. It says nearest tenth. 